Well, hey everybody. Welcome to the update preview stream. This is Bugs here. I'm joined today by Artemis and Miss D. Say hi, guys. Hey, everyone. So, what do we have going on? Well, it's a cool one because a awesome new thing just hit staging this morning. We're still in the initial testing phases of it and still figuring some things out. Uh, but it is pretty cool. We got the attack helicopter here. And once again, this is on the main staging branch. And we're going to go through what we're seeing with the attack helicopter now, some specifics and everything like that. There's also a bunch of other stuff going on in Rust development that we will touch base on as well. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to do at Miss D underscore that's me in chat. And we will get to as many questions as we have the opportunity to. Also, if you're wondering what's going on with WIPs, what is the wipe schedule for today? Well, it is one week since the forced wipe and update and everything like that. So that just means the Thursday weekly wipe servers for Rustified are wiping. That's your mains, your smalls, uh, your barons, and your zen labs. And they are wiping at regular scheduled time, which is 3 p.m. local time for the region, which means EU wiped three hours ago. AUSEA wiped like 13 or so hours ago. And the US servers will wipe in just about two hours at 3 p.m. EST. These are map wipes only because we just had a blueprint wipe for most of our servers last week. And yeah, that's what's going on with wipes. So let's get into it. Let's look at this attack helicopter. What is the deal with this attack helicopter? Well, it was just added to the main staging branch. It was on testing for a while on AUX2, but not publicly available. And this has been a project that's been in process for months and months now. So it's really exciting to finally see it come to fruition, to see what this puppy really looks like and what it's capable of doing. And let me tell you, it's pretty darn capable. Now, I do want to remind everyone, as with any new thing that was just added to the game, especially on staging, everything is very subject to change. So if something strikes you as, oh my god, that's way overpowered, or that's dumb, or just whatever, uh, take it with a grain of salt, because everything is subject to change. Given this is on staging now, I'd say it's very likely that it will be coming in the September update. What even day is that? That's going to be... September 7th. Okay, so three weeks from today. We're four weeks. That's four weeks from today. We got a long month. We got five Thursdays this month. I just realized that. But anyway, yeah, it's likely coming in the September 7th update. And that means there's a number of weeks on staging for testing, for balance, and all this other stuff. And there's some other things planned coming into the game along with the attack helicopter that will ideally provide some balance as well. So just keep that in mind as we're going through things here. But what's the basic rundown of what we got going on here? Well, the attack helicopter is a two-person helicopter. It's somewhere size-wise between the minicopter and the scrap, uh, and you can purchase it at Airwolf over at Bandit Camp. It is 2250 scrap, 2250 scrap. To purchase so it's not the cheapest thing in the world uh, but boy is it pretty versatile first and foremost as the name would indicate you can attack things with this you can attack things with this in multitudes of different ways so it's a two-seated vehicle as i mentioned and the seat in the back is the pilot and then the seat in the front is the gunner and now what the gunner can do is actually load up all types of rockets and also attach a gun to the bottom front of it, just like a turret. And then in their little gunner view, you can see this kind of green, discolored view a little bit. It's like a little blurry, a little low resolution, but in this view, the gunner can actually point around, zoom in and out, and fire both types of weapons. Uh, left side is firing a gun, and right side is firing any rockets you might have loaded. And once again, you can add any type of gun you want, just like a normal turret, uh, along with the ammo you want to use. And then you can add any type of rocket at the moment as well into the rocket area. Uh, you hook up the gun just like a turret in the front. You just go right to the front of the thing, and it has a little hashtag turret thing. And then it loads up a little inventory space just like a normal turret, like 
you would see so you have the gun and you can add uh, any ammo and stuff like that and then if you go on to the side of the attack helicopter you'll see a thing where you can add the rockets and then also as you would imagine this thing runs on low-grade fuel and the fuel is accessible via the outside external tanks uh, on the side of the helicopter itself as well so this thing is very fast this thing is very fast it's very nimble uh, especially when you're low to the ground whizzing through things man it's got it's got quite an amount of speed to it and the turning and everything like that uh, is really on point uh, the people who we've tested with who have flown it especially the ones who are more experienced with uh, flying helicopters and rust have all commented that it's got a really great feel as a pilot yeah, it really and is. yeah it's just nimble it goes where you want to go it goes like it's, it's startlingly fast um and we're definitely going to need that uh global network bases thing that stands to uh, have the bases be visible from farther out from a greater render distance because you can go so fast across the landscape with this thing uh, it's i could definitely see instances where you got huge zerg bases loaded in at the last minute just because you are zipping along uh, around the ground here and everything along with being very fast and nimble it has 850 hp and as i mentioned it runs on low grade fuel uh, there's a lot of information on the gunner seat, which is cool. As I mentioned, you can you kind of get into the gunner seat and then you click E to get into the gunner view. And from there, your whole vision is taken over and you move your mouse around, kind of like manually operating a turret and stuff like that. You can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, and if you look at this UI, there's actually a lot going on. There's the compass, uh, there's the ammo left on the left, uh, both the magazine you're currently working with and the entirety of the ammo you loaded in there and there's the rocket ammo on the right there's this hvr thing that's showing up around i'm not sure what do you guys think that is not sure it's true yeah i've seen it a lot of places right now. yeah I'm, i haven't figured that one out once again we literally were just testing this uh before uh for the first time because it was just added to staging like four yeah, hours HV ago rocket? Yeah, is it, does that oh, mean we have be, HP yeah, rockets could, loaded? Yeah, is that the type totally of rocket loaded? Is probably, yeah. Okay, cool. Sense, yeah. yeah, that's what I kind of figured. Okay, cool. Um, and yeah, you can look around, you can fire. Uh, you can also, if you are getting attacked, there's a little damage indicator that shows up as well when you're in the gunner seat. It's a little red DMG thing that shows up. So you can see when you're actually taking damage as well. Uh, there's also a small light that can be turned on to illuminate the ground. It's not super bright, it's not like a crazy spotlight or anything like that. But with L, if you're especially at night floating near the ground, uh, you can turn that on and see the ground a little bit more. And of course others will be able to see around as well. And then I know there's a green hue to the gunner view, but it's not really like night vision. Because the first thought was, oh, is that, let's turn it to night and see if it's actually a night vision view as well. But when we turned it to night, it's kind of just dark and hard to see stuff. Because as you can see, the filter they put on this is kind of uh, makes it a little lower resolution, a little blurry, stuff like that. Uh, but overall, this thing is super nimble. It, given the firepower you can add on this, I mean, you can add an M249 to the front. Uh, you can add a crap load of rockets in there and just strafe around and really wreak some havoc around uh, just in its default state right here. So very interesting. Now the other thing I will note again with this is there are some other countermeasures and defenses apparently planned with the addition of this attack helicopter. So one of the things you might have seen if you look at commits there just the other week was a new branch that showed up called homing missiles. And I imagine the homing missiles are going to be something that pretty easily lock onto this and probably other uh, helicopters as well and will enable people on the ground and stuff to more easily take this thing out because I mean if you try to fire a rocket at this as it's strafing around it's going to be pretty much impossible you know to hit uh, but if you got a homing missile well, that could uh, that could you know help out a lot and also they're apparently going to be adding some flares and stuff as well I'm not sure if that's going to be an air to air countermeasure thing or something uh, but it's all to say there are some more uh, additions to the game 
that are planned to go along with this. So it's not just going to be the attack helicopter added and, uh, and that's it. So very interesting addition. Once again, you get it at Airwolf, uh, at Bandit Camp, and it's uh, 2,250 scrap, so not the cheapest thing. As Artemis goes around here, you can see the different mounting points for the, the turret, where you access the rockets, where you access the fuel. Uh, and then once again, the gunner seat is the front seat and the back seat is the pilot seat. The pilot is not able to fire any rockets or operate the gun. Uh, I love the look of it as well. It's got a really nice rusty kind of handmade janky kind of look. It's got like this afterburner thing on the back, which looks really cool. And I guess speaks to why that it's so damn zippy. Uh, and yeah, there's not much protection for the people in there. It doesn't look like so you are susceptible to getting shot as the pilot and everything like that. And once again, it has 850 HP, so it can definitely be shot down. It can definitely be damaged, uh, but it is just off the bat, uh, seemingly quite the force to be reckoned with. So exciting to see this. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, anything uh, you want us to test. Once again, uh, please do Miss D underscore that's me for any questions in chat. And we'll be happy to test out various other things uh, with this attack helicopter. But in the meantime, I want to go through, because there's a bunch of other stuff being worked on as well uh, on the staging branch. So the team is making forward progress. Now, very often after a forced wipe and big update, you will see some hot fixes come out. And this week was no <laughs> different. Uh, <laughs> you good, Shadow? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, we did see two kind of hot fix patches come out earlier this week to fix a couple things. There was some industrial light fixing. Uh, they removed the emoji skin tone due to increased derogatory and racial content in chat. Uh, so skin tone removal on those new emojis, some material fixes on industrial lights and sunglasses, and an LOD fix on the rib. And they fixed some emojis not working when a player username has like a less than symbol in it. And they also fixed uh, players being killed when mounting the missile silo uh, computer station, which is just a little thing that snuck in there. Uh, so a couple of hot fixes. Those are all live in the actual game now. Uh, and once again, they came out in two. You might have seen uh, two little patches hit uh, earlier in the week, and they were optional. But if you do run a server, I do recommend you run these because it's always a good idea to run the hot fixes pretty quickly after they are released. Especially, you never know if there's some other exploits or things like that that uh, are in the mix and getting hot fixed as well. Uh, but yeah, on top of that, we're seeing some new functionality. One thing we're seeing, and this is maybe related to the new edition water additions and stuff like that that they've been adding and the upcoming Nexus stuff and the ferry terminals and the tugboat and all that stuff. But they're working on this thing called uh, Boat Drift. At least that's what I'm kind of calling it. It's over on the Boats at World Edge branch. And basically, it's just a new feature that will make boats that are left alone out in the open water gradually just drift to the shoreline. So that kind of makes sense and is nice. Like if something's just left way out in the water, eventually it'll reach the shoreline again and it'll be more easily accessible to other people in the game. So that's cool. Uh, also, they are doing a lot of work on backpacks. Now, the Backpacks branch is something we have seen in the past. It, it is a Hack Week branch. And in fact, Backpacks themselves have been kind of in this concept limbo state for the game for years now. The idea of having this extra thing that you can put on your back and just carry more inventory with, probably at the expense of movement speed or something like that. Uh, it's been an idea for a long time. Now, in just the past week, though, we're seeing a flurry of new commits on that Hack Week Backpacks branch. Now, given it is a Hack Week project, it's possible it won't make it in the game. Like, not every Hack Week project uh, makes the, the cut, so to speak. There was, like, the, the idea of the airships, where it was, like, bases could float with hot air balloons. That was a Hack Week thing, and that never made it in. But, but then we just had the emojis, which was a Hack Week thing, and that made it in. I feel like backpacks in some manner, shape or form are just inevitable to make it into the game. So this might be the genesis of that. Basically what we're seeing on the commits 
is they're working on just the first iterations of what that player held backpack is going to do, how it's going to work. They've got a test backpack that adds an extra 24 slots in the inventory. No word on how this is going to impact uh, player movement. It, I, I, it would make sense that if you've got a backpack and you fill it up, there's going to be some downside, right? Uh, because it's great to be able to carry that much more stuff. But I imagine you're not going to be able to move as fast or maybe some stamina type of thing will be added or something. So we'll see. But uh, nevertheless, 24 extra slots will allow players to carry around a lot more than that standard inventory size. Now, it also looks like there's a couple different color backpack variants that are going to be coming out. Uh, they're working on just different miscellaneous things, with getting the backpacks to show up on the backs properly and working them into the existing inventory system in a clean manner and everything like that. It's all in a separate branch still and still very much just rapid commits and, and a high velocity of commits. So no visuals yet and still a lot of the specifics are kind of up in the air. But given the speed at which we're seeing commits hit that backpacks branch, I think it's very possible we could see backpacks on the staging branch at some point in the near future. Now also, we've got weapon racks, and this is another project that was a Hack Week project and looks like it definitely is making its way into the game. It looks like, and word on the street is, it's going to be coming as a DLC. I'm not sure if maybe one or whatever of the weapon racks will be available to everyone and then maybe extra ones will be a DLC or if they're quite frankly just all going to be a DLC. But we did see the weapon racks move from the AUX1 branch over to normal staging, which is a good sign as far as getting them into the game. We also this week saw uh, more finishing pass on the different things for the weapon racks, such as like doing the icons, the crafting costs, the HP, the protection stats, finalizing those descriptions and names and just various other things that you know, are required to get these things ready for prime time. So as you can see here, the weapon racks, there's three different sizes of wall mounted weapon racks. And then there's one floor deployed weapon rack as well. And it's really cool how they work. You can really just kind of grab and go. You can drop stuff very easily. Uh, you can not only add just weapons, but you can now add uh, various different tools and things like that as well. And as you see, you can go up just take it, grab it, and go, basically. And then when you want to place something there, you can do the same thing. It's got kind of that blue, you know, building guide-esque thing, but in the shape of whatever you're holding. So you can see, and they've got various different sockets across all the racks. So you can kind of really work things exactly how you want it to be fit in there. You could do some nice designs, nice organization, I can imagine. And not only is it a great utility, but it also really spruces up the inside walls of the base and everything. It looks nice. Uh, so still waiting to hear exactly how these are going to make it into the game. I'm not going to go too much into the specifics of crafting costs and HP and everything like that. Because although a first pass was done on it, we still have several weeks until these are coming into the game. And very often these things are tweaked and changed right up until the point of launch. Uh, you can also see there's lights on the top of them, which are really cool. So it kind of illuminates, adds to the ambiance in the base, adds to the decor factor uh, for the base as well. And there, there are some, you know, uh, things right now with like it's reloading the weapons sometimes like immediately and everything. And some people were concerned, oh my God, it's going to be so pay to win if it goes live in the game like that. But I, I, that's just a, a glitch that's not going to, you're not going to be able to insta reload an M249 by popping on a rack and pulling it back out. Like, that's crazy. That's not how this is going to function, you know, when it goes live in the game. So it's kind of one of those things, you know, take it with a grain of salt and let's wait and see uh, as we get closer to the update how these are going to be, you know, released into the game. Regardless of how you slice it, though, it does look like these are. Uh, nearing completion, nearing launch, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see them live in the game for the September 7th update. Uh, we will wait and see if they're all part of just one DLC or if it's some variation of something else. So we will let you know as more comes to light, but given they're on the main staging branch and looking good and functioning well and everything like that, 
I'd say we're not more than a couple weeks off from seeing these bad boys in the game. Also, we got some more work on a new flyby. Uh, this is basically, it looks like for the end of wipe events, you know, related to the nuclear missile silo and stuff, they have the jets that fly by now and strafe over. But if you've ever gotten like close to one of them, it it's kind of like a low poly paper airplane type of model. Like it's a very janky ass model of the actual jet. And so what they're working on is a new model uh, and new textures for the F-15 E strike eagle fighter jet that uh, is going to be strafing over no word on if it's going to actually do more things like maybe engage with people below or drop bombs or anything like that but it does look like they are moving forward and uh, adding a little bit more to that end of wipe uh, action and event stuff so we'll keep a close eye on that separate branch no visuals and everything but as it gets merged in, I'll be sure to give you all the details about that F-15E uh, Strike Eagle or whatever it is. I'm not a fighter jet expert, but that's what the commits say. Also, they're working more on Tutorial Island. This is something that we saw just the first commits of and, and the branch uh, just came about a couple weeks ago. And it looks like they're basically creating kind of just this new smaller, probably island and maybe it'll just be a place for people to go learn the game. That's what it kind of sounds like. Uh, in the past, they had like Craggy Island, which was a small island where the devs could more easily test new things they're adding into the game. And it kind of strikes me, and this is just, I'm pulling this out of my you know where, but it strikes me that the tutorial island is most likely going to be something kind of similar, but for players to go and learn how to play the game, get some tutorials, learn the basics of what you need to know so you're not just as a new player your only option isn't just being dropped into a naked on the beach with hundreds of other people who know what they're doing so we're keeping an eye on tutorial island separate branch no visuals but i imagine that's going to be something for the newbies to kind of get their feet wet in the game and get a little more comfortable with what's going on before they go really into the hardcore pvp servers and that's not all. There's some other things being worked on as well. In the realm of Hack Week projects, there is this new skin viewer that's being worked on. Uh, that's probably going to be more of a tool for skin creators and developers and stuff. Uh, there is a, if you've ever worked with skins and uploading skins to the game, there is currently a skin viewer and it's kind of like a little like one scene view and it's kind of janky i mean it works but it's a little janky and i could see definitely you know room for improvement so i get the sense that this might be just a new variation of that functionality it could be something different as well uh, but we'll keep uh we'll keep you posted on that and then also they did increase the stack sizes of water electric components to normalize with increases when durability was removed. So the water pump can now stack to three instead of one. Water purifier, same thing. Instead of one, it can stack to three. And fluid switches can stack to five when previously it was only one that they could stack to. And yeah, that's basically what we are looking at as far as what's going on in Rust development this week. Uh, so yeah, shout out, or oh, Miss D, do we have any <laughs> questions from the audience? Yes, we do. But let's start with uh, when is WIP? Yeah, so WIPs are at regular scheduled time today, which for Rustified servers is 3 p.m. local time for the region. And this is when we wipe our servers any day that isn't a forced wipe day. Any day that isn't the first Thursday of the month, uh, this is when we wipe our servers. 3 p.m. local time for the region. So that means EU wiped an hour, no, three hours and 24 minutes ago. Uh, AU and SEA, they wiped like, 12, 13 hours ago, because they live in the future. And in uh, just about an hour and a half at 3 p.m. Eastern, we've got the US servers wiping. And once again, these are the Thursday weekly wipe servers only. So that's your mains, your smalls, your barons, your Zen Labs, EUS if you're over uh, in the EU. And yeah, and that's it. Let me see here. Is there any armor limitations for the pilot slash gunner? Point. Do you want to try it with hands or you want me to? I can do that actually. Yeah. Yeah, give it a go. Let's see if there's anything you can't really uh, get away I with wearing. I would imagine it would only be pans, if anything, because mounted. Yeah. 
when are the weapon racks coming in? It is not confirmed when the weapon racks are coming in. In fact, the it's it's pretty rare this early in the month that the devs will confirm anything for the next update. Generally speaking, we'll see a tweet coming out on like the Tuesday before that first Thursday that says, uh, and this would be from the Rust, you know, uh, Twitter account or X account or whatever, and uh, and they'll say like a little like summary of what you can expect in the update this week. But this early in the month, we're generally not getting any confirmation about when anything in particular is coming in. Uh, so it looks like the weapon racks are going to be coming in for the okay. September seventh update. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can mount that, huh? And all now, that heavy. Yeah, yeah. For now. Keep in mind grain assault, subject to change, still a work in progress. Okay. But uh yeah, it's all to say weapon racks probably September seventh update. Maybe word is they're gonna be part of a DLC. Um uh, I'm not sure if all of them are gonna be a DLC or just some of them. Uh but probably given they're on the main staging branch now, this early in the month. I'd say it's very likely we're going to see the weapon racks come in for the September 7th update. I'd also say, given we're over here testing out the attack helicopter, there's a very high likelihood we're going to see that attack heli make its way in for the September 7th update as well. And once again, there's some other things planned, like homing missiles and apparently some flares uh, as some counterbalances for these attack helis. And everything that we're showing off is, of course, subject to change. So, grain of salt, all that good stuff. Um, did you say that we can use normal rockets to, to read with? Yeah, at the moment, it looks like you can put any type of rocket in the attack heli. I just saw a question. Um, maybe, Artemis, you can test that. Can you uh, uh, drive it on the ground? Yeah, good question. I tried that. Um again but no at the minute no not at all no wheels uh, 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 let me see here can, can we put the trumpet in the turret slot asking the important questions here I yes. love it <laughs> but they would totally do it uh, 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 yeah, that would be just really fly around <laughs> yeah you do get kind of a hover mode Yeah, you're just a skilled pilot, Artemis, that's all. You make it look easy. Uh, can you shoot that machine up with it? Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. If you, yeah, if you have the aim, I would imagine so. Yeah, if you've got the skills, baby, you can do it. This, this, yeah, at the minute, this guy is really nimble and basically like an improved uh, mini, I would say, in, in my opinion. Yeah, like much more nimble and versatile as far as uh, moving around and everything yeah, and yeah, everything sure. is concerned and it's fast it, the thing's quick as hell does this fit in a garage like uh, the mini uh no apparently it's not fitting in garage doors quite yet but i did hear a little rumor that maybe the guys at face punch are going to do something to account for that i'm not sure if that's going to be coming in for the September update as well, but apparently uh, some uh, something might be done to account for that. But at the moment, no, it's not fitting in the garage doors because it's it's notably bigger than the mini copter. You can see the size comparison here between uh, the three copters, and it's like a nice middle ground between. So, what if it's nighttime and you're wearing night night visions? So you can wear them while you're seated in any of the yeah, seats, but it, it, they don't work with the, the gunner vision, I don't think, as far as we've seen so far. Yeah, no, the gunner vision isn't going to give you night vision w by wearing the goggles because you're really just kind of zooming into that screen. And all this, although the screen does have this green hue and stuff, it isn't really night vision. It's just kind of filtered a little bit and a little more low res. I just don't, blah. I just joined the stream. How do you obtain one of these? 
So you can get the new attack helicopter just like you get a lot of the other helicopters over at Bandit Camp at Airwolf. The price currently is 2,250 scrap. So it's not the cheapest thing, but boy, given the versatility that it has, you can add any gun to the front of it because it's got essentially a, a manual turret on the front of it that you can attach uh, any weapon you want. And then on top of it, you can put any type of rocket inside of it as well. You can have both those loaded up. And when you're up there in the gunner seat, you can fire both of those pretty consistently. And so uh, it really is a force to be reckoned with. Reading questions here. Uh, can you put a weapon rack on a tugboat I'm staging? And I just tested that and you cannot, at least not yet. Oh, that's a good question though, because that yeah. would be great for the inside of the tugboats. Oh, we need to let some rockets up. <laughs> oh, we're out of rockets, okay. Oh, um, let me see here. I'm reading questions on flying, not a good combo. It's uh, all right, <laughs> wait there, I'll, I'm, I'll no clip out. Exactly. Is all this for PC users or both PC and console? This is only PC users. Uh, the development of PC and console is actually completely separated. In fact, the console version of the game is, I mean, it's tempting to even call it like a different game because there's so many, and it's, of course it's not. Of course it's the, the, the same game in name and in look and everything, but there's so many things that exist on the PC version that don't exist on the console version. And there's various other changes and so the team at Double Eleven is the team that works on console version. We actually don't really focus too much on the development of console version because, I mean, there's just so much going on in uh, in the PC space. And normally, anything going in the console version is just something that was on the PC version uh, already anyway. So uh, it's all to say, no, this is just for the PC version as it stands. Although the console version may, in fact, get it at some point in the future. So this one, okay. For the yeah. Too much okay. To <laughs> Takes you down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How can you fly compared to the mini? Like, is it just a sensitive or more like scrap, like the scrappy? I think it may be more similar to the mini, but I don't think it's so. so I don't know how to say that. But it's not so loose or wiggly. It's very. Um, nimble. It's very. Yeah, I was gonna say. If it's anything, very easy. It's probably, it's probably a bit more nimble than the mini. Yeah. yeah, I would say. In my and opinion. faster. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely, definitely faster. But I, it's harder for me to fly the Mini than it is to fly this one. And this, it's because it's been a while since I flo flew the Mini. I don't know. Yeah, and I just absolutely cannot ever fly with mouse and keyboard. I can't fly helicopter <laughs> stuff with mouse and keyboard. I really got to try hooking the controller up because apparently that can work. I just literally never tried it. Um, but yeah, I'm complete garbage at flying any of these things with mouse and keyboard, but based on some more experienced flyers testing that we've seen, uh, it's not only very nimble, it, it's got a great feel to it as far as like, it just yeah. goes where you it want feels, it to go. You know what, it feels more balanced than the Mini, for sure. Yeah. That's what it is. It feels like it's kind of center of gravity is pretty much where you are, which is kind of comfy. Fuck! I accidentally pressed press space. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll definitely happen. I'm down. Help. I need somebody. <laughs> Oops. Um, so about that. <laughs> Next question. Oh, shit. Hold on. Um, folks, can you do a recap? <laughs> Yeah, I'll do a little recap recap here. Uh, we're over here on the main staging branch, and just earlier today, like four, four and a half hours ago, the attack helicopter, the first version of the attack helicopter was added. Also, we've got the weapon racks are more finalized and on the main staging branch as well. So shaping up for some cool things coming into the game, probably in September, although not confirmed by the devs yet. A little bit on the attack helicopter. It is a two-seater uh, vehicle. So you've got a pilot and a gunner. The pilot sits in the back. The gunner sits in the front. The pilot cannot operate as the gunner. So you, you need both if you want to shoot and fly. You gotta have two people. Uh, and 
you can purchase it. It's available for purchase at Bandit Camp at the Airwolf for 2,250 scrap. So it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but boy is it versatile because you can load up both rockets and it's got in the front a turret of sorts of any order that you can add any gun to and any bullets to. And then you can also put in any type of rockets that you want. And then the gunner, from this gunner view, you can see this kind of green, like kind of low res kind of view. The gunner can zoom in, point around, and left click to fire whatever gun is in the turret. And then right click to fire whatever rockets they want to fire. And uh, on top of the firepower that it has, it is super fast and very, very nimble. Uh, Size-wise, it's between the scrap heli and minicopter. So it's a bit larger, but uh, boy, is it is it nimble. It's got 850 HP. It runs on low-grade fuel, as you would imagine. Uh, to add the rockets and the fuel, you do so uh, on the ground outside of it. There's fuel tanks, very easily labeled. And then you see kind of the rocket launcher section, and you just look at that, and you can add whatever rockets you want. And then for the turret, that's right on the front under the nose near the gunner camera and you can just go there it says like hashtag turret and then you can put whatever weapon you want load it up with bullets take off and go start wreaking some habit havoc i should say once again the gunner seat uh you can sit there and just kind of look around or you can click e to view the gunner view that brings you into that lower quality kind of greenish view where once again you can aim zoom and shoot but also as a gunner you can you know shoot weapons out just while you're sitting there as well. Uh, there is a small light that can be turned on to illuminate the ground. Uh, that's just clicking L. It's not like a crazy spotlight or anything like that. It's not super illuminative, but, uh, or I should just say bright. I don't know. It's not super bright, but it can help out if you're like trying to land at night or whatever. It can help you uh, see a little bit. The look of it is really cool. It's got a nice classic, like real rust kind of handmade janky look. It's got this afterburner in the back, which speaks to just how fast this thing can zoom around. And uh, yeah, along with this, there are some new base defenses and various other countermeasures apparently planned. So if you look at the commits, you might have seen the homing missiles branch. That looks like it's going to be coming in to be kind of a counter for this. And apparently there's also some sort of uh, flare system maybe in the works, which I guess would be for air-to-air -air countermeasures or something like that. So still a work in progress. Definitely uh, take everything with a grain of salt because the specifics of what it can fire, how fast it goes, how nimble it is, uh, all this stuff is very much subject to change. And nevertheless, though, it is on the normal staging branch for testing now. So everyone has tested now. And it looks like we've got about four weeks until the September update when it will most likely go live in the game. So I would imagine there is this change and everything in the meantime. But that is where we are at now with the attack helicopter. And it's based on everyone who likes flying in the game who has talked to this test of it. Very nimble, very fast, uh, very balanced uh, as far as like moving around is concerned and everything like that. And so, yeah, so that's it. Oh, I'm being told it's hard to hear me while the heli gun is firing. Should we, bad, can we yes, drop sorry. some <laughs> sounds a little bit? Whoa! <laughs> Whoops. Can I? Rip. I saved it. Mayday, mayday. No, 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 I did it. I saved it. <laughs> I actually saved it, what the fuck? Nice save. Thanks. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, that is the attack helicopter. Still a uh, lot subject to change potential and all that good stuff, but um, but yeah, it's on main staging, so you can go test it if you want. If you are running a staging server and you've got moderator access uh, to spawn one in, you just do spawn attack helicopter, uh, one word, for attack helicopter that is, I think it's technically the full thing is dot entity, but if you just do spawn attack helicopter, uh, that's enough to get one spawned in there. And then you can play around with it. Now also this week, uh, to continue on with the recap, we did, as is very common to see after a forced wipe, uh, we saw some hot fixes coming in this week. Earlier in the week, there were two 
optional server and client uh, updates. And this was just to fix some various things like some material fixes with industrial lights, with sunglasses, a rib LOD fix. There was some emoji stuff not working when a username had a less than sign in it. And there's a fix for players being killed when mounting the missile silo computer station. And then also the emoji skin tones were removed due to increased derogatory and racial content in chat. So that's always fun. And then we've got a new functionality being worked on, still on a separate branch, but and not a huge deal, but something nice for boats where if you leave a boat out in the open water, basically it will start drifting back this is over on the boats at World Edge branch, where we also saw it kind of like if you get to the World Edge, it kind of like starts pushing the boat back. But it looks like they're going a step further with that to even have boats gradually float towards the shore uh, when they're left alone and abandoned out in the water. So that's cool. There's also a lot of work, uh, a flurry of commits, if you will, on the Hack Week backpacks branch. So backpacks are something that have been long since in you know concept limbo they've been talked about uh, as an addition to the game for years and years now but we've never really seen them come in but now we do have a lot of various commits towards bringing these backpacks into the game it is a hack week project so i won't say it's 100 percent guaranteed they'll make it in but I think there's a very, very high likelihood we will see backpacks in the near future. What we're seeing based on commits basically is that they've added a test backpack in and they're working on the various different functionalities of showing the backpack on players' backs and how it interacts with the inventory, the existing inventory UI. The test backpack has an extra 24 slots of inventory, so it will definitely help players carry around a lot more stuff. Is it going to slow players down or have some downside to it? I imagine, but we're not seeing any specifics around that. And, uh, oh, and I'm seeing a, I'm reading my article on rustify.com and seeing a typo. I'll make a note to, that's the second one I've seen. I always catch my typos when I'm, when the article is already live and I'm reading it, but anyway, it's fine. That's how grammar works. But yeah, it is a, yeah, I said it's a heck week project. Uh, it's a hack week project. That's what happens when I dictate my, uh, my articles for the first draft. Uh, we get like uh, the white time instead of wipe time, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I imagine these will make it into the game. It looks like there's going to be a couple different colors and it's just going to basically allow people to carry around more stuff, probably at the cost of some movement speed or something like that. Now, also, we've got weapon racks are nearing completion. They are also over on the main staging branch. They were merged in from Aux 1, where they previously were. And this final round of uh, kind of just final pass on various different miscellaneous things that are needed for it to go into production has been done. So things like the crafting cost, icons, uh, hit points, protection stats, descriptions, names, various things like that we've seen uh, be worked on with the weapon racks this week. You can see there are three wall-mounted weapon racks, each with a varying different size. And then there's also a one floor-mounted weapon rack. And so that's four total. Word is these might be all part of a DLC, although I don't think anything's been confirmed with that. So we're not 100% sure how they're gonna make their way into the game. Uh, but they are really cool. They have great utility. You can easily uh, grab and go and just drop stuff off. Super easy. It's got all the sockets in it. So you can really organize uh, the, the rack as you would like and create some cool designs with the different weapons you put on there and everything like that. They've got lights above it. So it's illuminated. It really adds a nice look to your base as well, uh, as well as having that great utility. And on top of it, you can also add a lot of tools. Now, uh, even you can even put your rocks on there if you are so inclined. Uh, so you, along with a lot of the weapons, you can add tools, you can add grenades, uh, various different things, hammers, uh, baseball bats, you name it. So they've got great utility. They look nice. Going to definitely spruce up how bases look. And we're still waiting to see how these are officially making it their way into the game but once again okay. word on the street i think we had a bit of an error there i'm just gonna pop us onto the brb uh oh 
a little a little can, crash a roo. Yeah, everyone can hear. Just there we go. For crash a roo. We'll pop back. Ah, uh, yeah, good old staging branch. <laughs> it wouldn't be the staging branch without the occasional I crash here you, or there. Yeah, when I tested it earlier, you could put Model Thomas on on the rack. Whether you can now, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I guess only once, and then the game crashes. That's it. But uh, well, I, yeah, I didn't crash. I'm still in. But cool. So regardless, it looks like weapon racks are definitely going to be making their way in for a September 7th launch. I say definitely. It's not confirmed. But based on how this stuff generally goes, we're seeing it on staging, main staging early in the month. Just like the attack helicopter, I'd say there's a very, very high likelihood we're going to see these weapon racks enter the game uh, for the next update which is, of course, every first Thursday of every month. So the next one being four weeks from now, uh, September 7th. So we'll keep you posted on that. Not going to go into specifics so much about, you know, the cost and the HP and various different things because it's all subject to change. But as we get a little closer and as we do every week, you can check out rustify.com. I do an article every week there, which summarizes in text and pictures everything going on in Rust development. And uh, also, same time, same place every week, we do this update preview stream, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern over here on Twitch. Now, also uh, being worked on, we've got some updates to the flyby thing. And that's for the fighter jet flying overhead when it's getting close to wipe time and those end of wipe events like Bradley's roaming and stuff and those F-15E fighter jets flying overhead uh, come about. What we're seeing on this new branch is basically a new model and textures for this F-15E Strike Eagle fighter jet. And if you've ever seen the current one that flies overhead, it's kind of like a paper airplane, low poly, janky ass thing. If you look far away, you can't quite tell but man if you take the time to get up to it it's like it doesn't even have three dimensions really it's kind of like a one of those what were those little balsa wood airplanes you could kind of put together it's it's almost yeah, like that yeah. uh so but now we're gonna have a nice new model i don't know if there's gonna be more actions that the uh, that this jet is going to be doing during the flybys is it just going to be flying by or is it going to engage somehow with the island i don't know but we'll keep you posted Speaking of islands, though, there's also uh, more progress on the tutorial island branch. And this, we haven't had any visuals or real specifics from the devs yet, but based on what we're seeing and what it looks like, it's just, just kind of like this is going to be a place for people to learn the game and have kind of a more safe environment to learn the various different dynamics of the game before they start off as, you know, a naked on the beach with a rock and a torch and 400 other murderers around them. So... Uh, keeping an eye on Tutorial Island, not sure if that will be like just some servers that maybe Face Punch just runs and points the newbies in that direction to get their toes wet or what, but we'll keep you posted as more comes to light. There's also more work on the new skin viewer, which probably isn't going to be anything very much for players. It's, I believe, more going to be for developers and skin creators to just be able to more easily uh, see in various different dynamics and test out their skins. And then also finally, we've got increased stack sizes of water electric components to normalize with increases when durability was removed. Basically, the water pump can now stack to three instead of one. Water purifier can also stack to three and fluid switch can stack to five instead of just one as well. So little quality of life stuff there when it comes to uh, water related electric components. And yeah, that about does it for the recapity gap here. Can you put a lock on the weapon rack? Mm, no. Very good question. No, good not question. The neither, neither lock you can put on it. Yeah, so if someone gets access to it, they just look at it and anyone can grab. <laughs> yep. Uh, you don't you need building priv or anything. Such yeah. <laughs> Bit of loot and scoot. Cassis have a question. Can Box fly the attack heli or does he crash that one as well? <laughs> no, I can't fly any of the mouse and keyboard flying a helicopter. You lost me, man. I got no feel of it. You get me with a, a controller on like GTA flying those helicopters. It's like second nature to me. I got no problem. And I've never tried setting up the controller in Rust. I probably really should. And maybe I will now that this attack heli's in. But but no, you get a mouse and keyboard flying a helicopter. I can't do it for 
for the life of me. But also, I'm getting to be an old man now, and I, I'm an old dog. I don't like learning new tricks, so you mentioned I'll own that one. Oh, nice. That's a great comparison for. To anyone, yeah. yeah, yeah, sending a context for people. Good call on that. I should probably go out of this while I'm reading, because. Um, let me see here. Uh -uh. How much damage does it do? No, so how much damage does the MG do? Uh, well, it depends. On the front, if you're talking about the turret on the front, you know, you can add any gun you want on there. So you could, I mean, shit, you could probably add any yoke on the thing if you want to. I, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but, oh, did we try adding a trumpet, by the way? Because yeah, that was a good did, question. And it works. And it works? Nice. Yeah. Wonderful. Good. <laughs> Just in case. You know. Thank God. Okay. I was hoping that way. We're safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Phew. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it really depends because the front of this thing, by default, you buy it at bandit camp or at, at outpost or whatever and um at airwolf it's 2250 scrap and then you just go up to it and it's an empty turret and then you can add whatever weapon you want whatever bullets you want you go to the side you can add whatever rocket type you want and then you add the fuel on the back of the fuel it's metal frags to repair if you want to repair it with the hammer and yeah it's and then you take off and go yeah. i promise there's fuel in there <laughs> Oh, you want oh, me to no, jump in? Me? Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, also, just once again, take all this with a grain of salt, because literally this was just added for initial public testing to the main staging branch like four or five hours ago. It was earlier this morning. And so everything is very subject to change. And we've got basically four weeks until would be the earliest it goes live in the game. I do imagine it's coming for the September update. Um, unless something horribly goes wrong or something with it but um but boy is it fast it's nimble it's, it's a so force to fast. be it's a force to be reckoned with for sure yeah um can you take out the weapon from the turret if someone is in the driver's seat and you're not in team with them good question we could test it when we get back to base uh, yeah i think folks is in team no i'm not so yeah if you guys want to come back i could try Yep. How can we spawn this heli on staging branch? Uh, to spawn it on staging branch, you, you need moderator access, of course, at first. Uh, but then you just do in console spawn attack helicopter. One word for the attack helicopter. Uh, because there's some other, if you do like spawn attack, you can see there's some other options for spawning things with attack in it. But if you do attack helicopter, one word, then it'll just spawn one right in front of you. Can you fire rockets while it's landed? Uh, no. Okay. Gunner is not active unless it's in the air, right? Uh, let me see next. How many bullets to destroy this heli? I don't know, we haven't uh, it's, done... Yeah, it's got 800 HP, so... Um... What is the mini sub got? I would say, um, doing very quick maths, um, it's going to be about five clips. If it works on the same premise as uh, the damage to the subs. Cool. And mm. yeah, and that's it, basically this early in testing, we tend not to go too far into the nitty gritty of things because it's just, we spend the time doing it and then they change it before it goes live anyway. So we'll have some more specifics as we get later in the month and this gets more finalized as uh, you know in addition to the game and give a lot more stats on like you know damage and what it Whoops. takes to take down um uh, how that reminded me how how much for a tech heli? it is uh for purchase you buy it with scrap over at airwolf oh, no, to uh, to kill it like the attack heli with this one can you not attack the attack heli with this mini Oh, you mean patrol heavy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, if, yeah. If, again, if you if hats off, if you you can land all that with the attack heavy, you probably could. But yeah, you can definitely take it on. on. Yeah, it'd just be dependent on what you have mounted and what ammo you have for the rockets. 
but I was testing the gunner seat out just very briefly and and shooting rockets at the attack heli. It was, I'll tell you, it was hard to, to land a shot when both helicopters are moving pretty quick. You got to lead, uh, you know, your shots and all it's this so, stuff. Yeah. The compensation's massive, isn't it? Yeah, and like, like like to the point where I landed a shot, and I was like, "Holy shit, I landed a shot!" <laughs> you know, it was like a surprise. <laughs> You're right. Yes, I am trying to find bugs and also trying to read and fly at the same time. You're doing great, Misty. <laughs> Fuck. Don't say that too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> does the weapon rack hold ammo as well? And no. no. I mean, technically, in the guns, you can have some ammo, but that's, yeah. Yeah. Can you put chocolate bars? You're so funny. <laughs> yeah, just a wall of chocolate bars. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice for the entrance of your base. You know, here, have a chocolate bar. Why is books? Was it further out? Behind us? Oh, base, it's fine. We can always just fly back. Um, there's no more new questions though. Uh, I think someone, what was someone, can the gunner cam have any night visibility or is it just a green filter? And it's basically just a green filter. We, I, at first when I, we were flying around at day and I saw a green, I'm like, oh shit, is this night vision too? Uh, but no, we turned it to night and you can't really, you can't see well at all because the filter like brings the qual as you can see it brings the quality down the res of it down a little bit it's got a little blur to it so it's not really doing you any favors uh, at night i just saw vibe says can you pick me up at outpost <laughs> 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 on my yeah, way making one stop there <laughs> yeah Pit stop. yeah just to demonstrate no definitely not that reason and MVGs don't affect it, unfortunately. Very dark with that on, huh? Oh, cool. And any other questions anyone has, once again, feel free to do at Miss D underscore that's me in chat. We got another couple minutes oh. left, but we're going to wind this puppy down here pretty soon. Do you think the boat drift will apply to the tugboat as well? Yeah, I think so. My sense of it based on the commits is it's basically any boat that's just left out in the water is gradually going to just float back uh, to the shoreline. Which I, I think that's a nice kind of quality of life thing. Uh, kind of makes sense. Well, so you hey. can probably see it here, but just with the rockets, um, you're actually firing from a position above the camera that you can't aim those. So that's just something to note. You can aim the gun, but not the rockets. Oh yeah, good call, good call. That's a nice, that's a good distinction. Okay, damn. Uh, can you chest crash a mini into the attack for me? Yeah, from the testing that uh, we've done so far, it, um, one doesn't necessarily beat the other. It's, it seems like the, the same old, that sometimes it's the one that hits the, the other first that ends up worse off. So it's not like a distinction for the minute. Someone wants me to do a flip. Yeah, right. <laughs> do a barrel roll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely fly, but well, no, I but actually that, did I, pretty well. That's it. You did really well. I must say, um, I have actually seen that you can you can flip them. I've seen some other people doing that, and I've also seen someone launch, uh, uh, land one on launch. Sorry, so it looks like um, because they're man more maneuverable, they're better with the uh, the sounds there. Um, is this weapon rack going to be a DLC or just a normal in-game item? That's not completely confirmed yet, but a lot of the word on the street, which I know you got to take with a grain of salt, but most of the murmurings about it is that it's a DLC. In fact, uh, the it, it, DLC was even mentioned in one of the commits on the branch, I believe. So I, I'd say it's mostly confirmed that 
it's going to be a DLC. Now, are all of them going to be a DLC? Or is just maybe the wall-mounted ones a DLC and then the floor-mounted one will be available to everyone? I don't know if they're going to split it up like that or not. Uh, but it does look like when it launches, it is going to be at least partially based on a DLC. How many records did you say you can fit in this? Um, I think it's got six slots. So, well, that's not that good, but six, six full slots of rockets. <laughs> Do rockets have greater range with launched from an attack heli than a rocket launcher? I mean, the drop-off looks about the same. Yeah, um, and I think no, as well in terms of actual attack range, there's no difference. So if you if you shoot from too far, um, they will just explode in the air before they hit a target. How easy is it to rate with this heli? Well, I mean, we could we could try to blow a hole in the base here real quick and just show people if you want. Yeah, break my base. Just not on the weapon rack side because we want to show this one more time. Oh. Yeah. To be fair, they're quite. Um, they might go anyway, depending. <laughs> yeah. And also, just once again, I feel the need to say, uh, still a work in progress. All this is subject to change. So do take it with kind of a, a grain of salt, what we're what we're seeing here. Uh, and they also do have planned some other countermeasures like homing missiles and apparently some flares or something like that uh, to uh, to help people, you know, defend against these. But you can see the That's aiming it. of the rockets is pretty hard. Like the, the pilot kind of has to aim it. You'd have to either be at a, a greater kind of angle, facing down to to get the, the trajectory, if you know what I mean, or you have to be real low. But yeah, if we can hover next to it, you I'm can. sure we can. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Yeah. You want to swap, Dick? It's easier. Oh, they're uh, saying HVR is your aim. That makes sense. Is that what that is? That little uh, that little uh -oh. box. Uh oh. Um, if it is, I wonder how. Uh, oh, I wonder how. It's, um, because I wasn't changing it. If that yeah, makes sense, it was changing. So whether I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. It only got. It was only in a few few hours ago. So literally learning with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you for your guys' patience because yeah, we're literally we're just playing with this a little while before the stream went live. Uh but but good call on that. And yeah, let's try to bl blow a hole in this base here. Yep, I'm just gonna repair it a little. Don't take the ground, just do it. <laughs> All right, so what? you ready? Uh, 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 uh. So the gun is aimable, but the rockets are not. That's it. From what I can tell at the moment, yeah, so the, the rockets uh, shoot from a fixed position, so you have to kind of aim them with the heli, but you can free aim the gun. And they do fire pretty fast. Yep. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I died. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Rip yeah, and just once again, given this was just added to staging today, that damage stats on everything that it's doing and everything are definitely not finalized, uh, I'd say. So, yeah, this is just the current state that it's in on staging right now very likely to change prior to going live for the it looks like the september update i think something that might be interesting as well is if you put x blur in it um and you you were looking to raid that way even if there was like a top breach that you wanted or something like that it might be quite quite easy to do i would i would imagine yeah i don't know if the edge is covered an answer to this but can you 
retrieve any rockets from a crashed slash destroyed player attack it attack hilly oh good question if it's dropping whatever loot and ammo is in there let's see let's blow this puppy up real quick see yeah, if we well, see any. i need ammo I, I would just fly up and drop it from a height my, my... yeah that's, that's true <laughs> I believe I can fly. I don't think it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It was because it was low health. <laughs> yeah. I do not have guard mode on. Yep, I think I saw it. <laughs> Yep, there's a turret. Yep, cool. So it does drop uh, the loot when it's destroyed. That's nice. Cool, I think, um, as we see in the others. Alright, cool. Well, I think that should about do it. We're over an hour here. Was there any last question before we wind this puppy down? I'm just scrolling real fast through to see if I missed any. When a helicopter that... Wait, what? When a helicopter that can land in the water? I think maybe can it land in the water? Maybe? Mm, no. I mean, maybe if you land on a tugboat or something somehow, but... Yeah, but it's, I think it's way too big for that. And one last thing. Where can you get this? So once again, just a little recap on the attack helicopter before we wind down. It's a two-seater. You can buy it at Airwolf uh, for 2,250 scrap. Uh, you can currently load in and fire all types of rockets. And also there's a turret on the front, which you can put any type of weapon you want and bullets and then the gunner can operate that through their kind of gunner seat. Uh, it's very fast and very nimble. Uh, Size-wise, it's you know between the scrap and the mini, uh, so it's it's definitely bigger than the mini. Uh, storage options are going to be a little limited, although apparently the devs are going to be looking into maybe some alternatives uh, for that. Uh, it also looks like there's going to be some other additions to the game uh, with the attack heli coming in like uh, homing missiles and maybe a flare defense system or something like that so it does look like uh you know th there's still other things as far as balance and everything is concerned it's got 850 hp and runs on low grade fuel uh so yeah it's also got lights you can hit l and it's got not a ton of brightness there but but it can come in if you're trying to land at night in a pinch it can come in handy the uh, gunner seat it's as you're looking through the gunner cam, it is a green kind of uh, filter on it, and it blurs it out and has a little bit lower resolution and stuff, but nevertheless, uh, it is not night vision. So you're not seeing very well at night, and you can't use night vision goggles in the gunner seat to like get a night vision view. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. It's, but I will reiterate, it's very fast and very nimble. It's got a great feel uh, when people are flying it, very easy to put it where you want it, and then, man, it really trucks along uh, speed-wise. But think I think that about yeah. does it. Yeah. Well, I do want to thank everyone for tuning in, as always. Uh, a lot of people, you know, think we're on the Face Punch payroll or we're developers of the game or things like that. Uh, none of that is the case. We're just an independent organization who loves reporting on development news each week and running the best servers that we possibly can. And literally the only way that we can do that is through the support of the community. So f to everyone who tunes in to watch, to people who give bits and subscribe on Twitch, and to our wonderful, beautiful, loyal VIP customers, thank you all so much for the support because we wouldn't be able to do this week after week and run the servers that we do uh, without such support from the community so really thank you so much much love to you all uh artemis and misty thank you as always for being my co-mcs you're welcome as always Bex. yep more than welcome 
And with that, we're going to wind this puppy down. We will be back next week, same time, same place, to give you another rundown of what's going on in Rust development. In the meantime, check us out on the socials, uh, Twitter, Rustified on Twitter, and Rustified.com for more details on you know specifics and my article, an article every week on Thursday. But we will leave it at that. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you all have a wonderful week and a wonderful wipe. This is Bugs, signing off. <laughs>